all of this video editing is taking up lots of space on my computer. So I got myself a new external storage. I bought this from Amazon. It comes with a standard US plug. And unfortunately, it doesn't work with our Australian plugs down under. So I need to get an adapter. So we're going to Bunnings, just us boys. Right, Zaki? I need to buy that adapter. And I hope I don't get tempted to get plants. Let's go here to the left, Zaki. Here. Come here. Just going to sneak a peek. Let's look for the succulents that found it. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted, but I have a lot more willpower now. Zach, look, they're sleeping. It is almost 10 p.m. and I'm trying to get Nikki here to sleep. I haven't had much time to do any filming. So I'm taking every chance that I can get. Anyway, I've got a box here and inside are several echeverias. These are my latest acquisitions. And in this box, I've got 10 little pups. Most of them are freelies, some are carunculated, and all of them have ticked off an item in my wish list. So let me show you. As you can see, most of them are really small pups, but I don't mind at all, and you know me, I like seeing them grow. Believe it or not, these are freelies, and some of them are carunculated. Let me walk you through the names of each one of them. So this first one here, the largest of the bunch, this is a hybrid, a hybrid between a Gibiflora, I'm not sure which specific cultivar, I'm guessing Metallica. So it's a hybrid of Metallica and Diffractance. I don't have a Diffractance here to show you, but I do have a Metallica. So I've got a Metallica out in the back, but it's dark right now, so I'll just do a B-roll. And this is what a Metallica looks like. And this little thing here looks a lot like the Metallica, for now at least. This next one here is a Sharma, Echeveria Sharma. This is one of the carunculated types and it can grow quite large. As you can see right now, this is a tiny pup, so I need to make sure that I protect it from the elements because it might be vulnerable to the cold, especially now that we're heading into winter. I could pretty much say the same for all of them because as you can see, they're tiny pups. And to that end, I'm not going to place them out in the open. I'm just going to keep them maybe somewhere here in one of my shelves. Just to keep them a bit warm. You know, insulate them from the cold. Anyway, so this is a Gibiflora cross with a Diffractance. This is an Echeveria Sharma. And the next one here, this is an Echeveria Pagoda. As you can see, the leaves are still quite smooth, but as it grows older, it's going to have all of these bumps on the leaves. 
Up next, this is an HBR Galaxy. And some of you who know me personally would know that I've been after this one for quite a while now. So I'm glad I have this now. This one here at the very end is a Cameo, Javeria Cameo. This is another caranculated type. It has been on my list for quite a while as well. Actually, uh, I've known about these three cultivars before. And it, I've been looking for so long for one of these. So I'm glad I found it. Now, on to the next row. This one is an Echeveria Altame. This is a freely cultivar. And as you can see right now, it's still tiny, tiny pop, so it has no frills. But give it some time, maybe by summer next year, it will be much bigger. This next one here is an Echeveria Rosalie. It is also a frilly, and, and I know that looking from photos online, this is going to be pretty. This next one here in the middle, this is an Echeveria Lolita. And I got this one because I don't have one yet. The Lolita is a hybrid between the Lola and the Pearl von Nunberg. That explains the shape and the color. This one here, this is one of the darker species. This is, a, this is an Echeveria racemosa. As you can see right now, it's not that dark. It's mainly because we've been keeping it in the shade just to make sure that it grows healthily, especially while it's still young. It's not really advisable to keep them out in the elements when they're too young because there's a lot of factors that could influence, that could affect their growth and it's better to be safe than sorry. And this last one right here, this is a Graptoviria Margaret Rose. So this is the odd one out. This is the only Graptoviria in the bunch that I bought recently. And the reason I got this is because I've seen a, a mature version of this. I forgot to take photos but I really like how it looked. So, I ended up taking one. And this one here is a sleeping baby. This means I better go in the house now and put her in bed. Now that we're on topic of new plants, let me show you some of the rest that I got recently. Most of them are on this rack because I want them to be exposed to a bit of sunlight. You want more water? <laughs> well, most of what you see here are my old plants, but some of them here but some of them, especially the ones in the plastic pots, like this two, some of these, and this one's up here, they are new. So let me walk you through them. This one is a Pachyveria bea. This two, and the Agavoides lipstick, or Red Edge, the proper name is Red Edge. This one I think is a Monroe, but I'm not sure. Because when I got this, it was quite etiolated, so I'll give it a bit of sun and see how it develops. But I definitely think my top suspicion is that it, this is a Monroe. This is a Painted Frills. This is a Maruba Benitsukasa. This one, I'm not really sure. When I found it, it was it looked worse than this. But it's been with me for about a week or two now, so it has improved a bit. As you can see, it's a frilly, and right now I'm thinking that it might. It doesn't look like a Zorro based on the colors. It kind of looks like a, either a Mona Loa or a County Fair, so it might be one of the two. But. Again, I'll need to wait before I can confirm. 
Now this one. This is the first time I've seen this one, this type. And it comes with no label. From poking around online, I see some references to the name Powdered Sugar. Was it? Or was it? Yeah, I think it was Powdered Sugar. But I can't find it anywhere in, in my usual references, so maybe it must just be a commercial nickname or something. We'll see. And right here, as you can see, I've got two Black Knights, Affinis. And you've been watching my show for a while, you know that I've, I've been having bad luck with Black Knights. So I hope this ones will do better. Here, I found this. I believe this one is a Linda Jean. I found this in the markets for only about 4 or 5 dollars. Pretty cheap for something this lovely. So I'm really lucky that I stumbled upon it. This one here is an Agavoidis hybrid. This is a Blood Maria. As for this one, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure which type this is, but it's one of those, uh, it's one of those HFRs with the longer leaves, longer pointy leaves. When I'm looking at it, nothing comes to mind immediately, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. I'm just drawing a blank, so I don't know what it is. And over there, this light colored one here, that's uh, Echeveria desmetiana, also known as Subsacillis or Peacocky. But the official name is Desmetiana. I've got another one somewhere, which is not doing so good. I think it burnt, most of it burnt during summer. So I decided to get another one, just as, just as an insurance, just in case the other one. So that's it for my new plants. Let's have a look at the rest of the garden. Wow. Here's my aeonium patch, and as you can see, they're starting to grow now. They're getting quite green because it's their growing season. You might remember this stump. This is an this is an aeonium David Baramwelli, which I just chopped because what? it was rotting. And right here in my hand is the head which I chopped off. I was just looking at it and I could see that it has started growing some roots, which is really good, which means that I was able to curb the, the rot and it didn't further progress upwards. So I'm glad I did that. I think it would be a better idea if I just plant this in the ground and remove the stump, but we'll see. For now, I'll just leave this here. Go. Hmm. Yeah, he misses the garden because it's been the weather's been bad for the past few days. Well, now finally we got the chance to do some gardening. Good job. <laughs> the Patreon Shrine. Based on the exchanges in the comments, I got a few people suggesting that I rework this part, and I definitely agree. I've got two people suggesting that I keep these three stumps here, get rid of this one, maybe shift them up a bit towards the right, that way I could have on either side would just be bird. rock pedestals. Is there a bird? The bird is walking. <laughs> the bird is walking? <laughs> yeah, Zach misses the garden. Good. Anyway, I'm going to rework this Patreon spot, just shift things around and 
Water. On both, on either sides, on either flanks would be stone pedestals, and I'll be Water. rearranging this such that they would be forming, forming an arc. No, not an arc, but rather there would be a cascade in the heights, and probably it would be a good idea to have the Zoro in the middle because this is the largest of them all, and that's the beauty of having them. And that's the beauty of having them in pots, I could just rearrange at will. One. As you can see here, I've removed quite a lot of plants now. And because of that, it got me thinking that maybe I should rework this section at the back. I'm thinking of making a, a raised bed here. I've got a lot. I've got lots of those Tuscan rocks, the, the oversized Sahara, so I'm going to use them to create a stack, pile them around here, and backfill with soil. That way, there would be a cascade in the plants here. I'm fine with keeping this ground level, and there would be another tier upwards that would give, that would give the plants at the back a better view. And besides, this allows them to get more sunlight, you know? So this one's what be covering the ones at the back, allowing them to get much needed sun. Now regarding this arc, the reinforcement plants that I put in here seem to be doing okay. For instance, the gold mound right here, they are not drying out, which is a good thing. There's still a lot of gaps around, which means that I might have to double up on my propagations. Take the elegance in this area. We got it. We got it. Right now, they're still quite small, and mainly it was mainly because summer was too hot, so they didn't grow as much. But pretty soon, some of my other more mature elegance would be producing lots more pups, so I could move some of them here to fill up more of the space. The jelly beans are doing much better, but they're starting to get quite tall. I might have to chop them and reset them. And that might produce a lot more offsets, you know, make things more thick. And I like the look of thick lumps. So that's a worthwhile thing to do. This Senecio cylindricus, this is related to the blue chalk sticks, different species. It's getting quite long and getting out of control, so I might have to pull it out and plant it somewhere else. The skies are pretty clear, quite blue, and we haven't had this or for quite a while now. Because of that, Zach couldn't be any happier. He's out in the garden. Unlike the previous garden review last month, I'm not going to take you on a tour of the whole garden this time. Because there's not much difference since last month, but except for the fact that I have, except for the fact that I have been moving things around, and the winter growers are now growing, and the summer growers are starting to sleep. Although there's one more thing that I wanted to show you. This is one of my jades. I got this as a cutting over a year ago, maybe two years ago, and it has grown quite large now. And it's the first time it has flowered for me because when I got them before, they were too young to flower at all. So this is pretty neat. I now have a better appreciation of this thing. I might be moving this out somewhere near the Patreon shrine, or maybe by the tulips, I don't know. Because of the blooms, I now have a better appreciation of them because I, because I don't typically like the, the clumping, the, the bush-like growth of this type of jade, or the Crashula ovata. I don't know, it's just maybe something about the blooms that, that makes them look beautiful now. So otherwise, I would never take notice of them. Thank you so much to Oscarino, Snapkui, Camille Narvaez, Gloria Ninotti, Linda, Tom, and everyone else who pledged. Your support is going a long way, as you can clearly see. Right, Zach? 
Zach, tell me what color is this? What color? What color? Red. And this? Pink. And for the next episode, I'll be reworking this whole area. I'll definitely act on the suggestions provided. Because they, they definitely look off balance right now. This is also a perfect opportunity to remind you about the notification bell. So if you are subscribed to Sariska Page, please make sure to click on the bell icon. Because YouTube has been working on how the videos are surfaced to the viewers. And there's been some change with the visibility which makes some of the videos not appear immediately in your feed. So by clicking on the alert on the notification bell, it makes you notified of any new videos from this channel. So I highly recommend that you do that. How do you like these rocks? Pretty, eh? I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And one last thing. You'll find out about it in the next episode.